Hi, I'm Daphne Cote. I'm a professional artist and art instructor. And today I wanted to talk to you about how to sharpen your pencils. Um, so I've got a charcoal pencil and a regular, a regular graphite pencil. I'm also going to show you um, a cool little trick with a white eraser. And I'm also going to show you how to hold your pencil and the blending stomp. Um, I do things a little bit differently and um, I think that this video would be great for my students to have a little refresher on how I sharpen my pencils. I use a utility knife that uh, you get at the utility knife or box cutter depending on where you're from. You might call it a different thing. Uh, find it at the hardware store and then every and as well as a sanding block. Um, or you can get a sanding pad that you can get from an art supply store. All right, let's take you down to my table here and I'll show you my supplies. Now let's get started with the utility knife. What I like to do is um, make it so that my graphite or my um, charcoal is sharpened so that it's really really long um, and I'll show you why when we get to how to hold your pencil. So we want to have the charcoal at a really long length um, just maybe like under an inch like two centimeters and then we also want to whittle away the wood as well. So I'm going to make sure that my um, utility knife is locked and this is the important part that you need to pay attention to is the hand that holds the utility knife isn't doing any of the work it's the hand that's holding the charcoal or the pencil that's doing all the work this one is just holding it so that it doesn't drop or fall some people use straight blades to sharpen their pencils, um, but I really don't like that idea because I just feel it's not safe and I've seen so many people hurt themselves. So I like to use a utility knife and nothing really cuts it really, it's, it's fantastic. So I'm going to take the hand that holds the pencil, I put my thumb on the back of the blade and because it's got this um, guard here it's really quite easy to do and I'm going to push with my thumb and I'm going to pull back with my fingers to pull the pencil back and this hand is just going to be lightly holding the blade so that it doesn't fall down so I'm going to hold my pencil push with my thumb and pull back with my fingers oh. and this is a brand new charcoal pencil I already took off the end a little bit that's just because it was um, riding around in a box for quite a bit um, you also want to buy your pencils from an art supply store so the reason for that is that if you just buy your pencils from a generic big box store, the people who staff the store, they don't know really what's in the boxes and they don't know that much about pencils. Whereas people who work in art supply stores, they know about pencils. So they do not drop boxes of pencils. They are very careful and cautious with their boxes of pencils and they store them properly. So often if you go to a box store and you pick up a pencil and you shake it around like this, um, you can hear and feel that the charcoal or graphite or colored pencil, whatever it is that you're using, um, will be broken inside because they just drop the boxes. So that's why it's really important to go to an art supply store. And you're not going to um, save any money. Like it's the same price whether you're going to um, your local independent art supply store or to, um, who knows, Walmart or Michaels or those types of large stores. Um, the cost is all the same, but it's the staffing that makes a huge difference, especially for pencils. Um, and I 
get so many people in my classes that go and they buy their pencils or um, and then they bring them and they get them from the big box stores and then they bring them to my class and then they end up having to use mine um, because they're all broken inside so they can't sharpen them um, and they tend to be quite useless um, and also splurge the like 20 cents it costs to get a name brand pencil um, it's worth it because they use a good quality wood so it's easier to sharpen in this way so I also whittle down the wood as well and I'll show you why in a minute because it really affects how you can hold your pencil okay so I've got it nice and long and then what we do is you can take either, oh, it's super dry out, so all of this is just static cling. Um, so you can take either the sanding pad here, or I really like the sanding block, and I just turn it and twist it and rub it back and forth, not very hard, and at a bit of an angle as well. So it's raised a little bit because I want to have a decent point. Um, you can also go up and down and turn it. Um, some people like to do that. They feel that it works a little bit better. I'm not sure. I like it either way. So other people like to save all of the um, the rubbings, all of this charcoal dust, and they'll put it off to the side and they'll actually use it with a blending stomp to do some of the drawings. So um, it's not a waste whatsoever. Um, and then another tip is that once you are done sharpening your charcoal or your graphite, is that you want to run your fingers along it or like get um, a cloth or tissue and just wipe off the excess because when you go to draw with it then it will be um, it'll leave a bunch of dust um, which is not very great it's no good okay so then why you want to have your pencil sharpened in that way with this really long point is that you can also hold your pencil in a different way. So I hold my pencil like this um, in order to draw and what happens is that I can use my whole entire arm to draw not just my wrist. So you can draw for longer um, because it's not going to hurt your wrist um, as quickly. Also, if you hold it like a pencil like this, which is fine for details and everything, is that you can only make marks that are as long as your wrist is going to go. Whereas if you hold it like this, you can make marks that are the whole length of the page. Also, you can control the, um, because of the way it's sharpened, because of the way you hold it, you can also control the line weight really easily. So if you lift your pencil up higher, draw it down, you'll have a thin line. If you ha hold it closer to the page and flatten it, you can get thick lines. Um, so that's really convenient um, and super helpful. Um, so for shading, it's fantastic as well because it just works so much faster. Um, and it's really easy to do large drawings. But I start like this on every single drawing. Um, it takes people about three to five drawings to draw in this way of holding it. And then you build up that muscle memory and it makes it easier um, to draw in that way. It does feel awkward the first three to five times, but it will save you in the long run and it makes drawing so much more enjoyable. That said, you also want to hold blending stomps. So blending stomps are usually just wound up pieces of soft paper that are wound up really tight. 
And if you hold a blending stump like this and blend with it, what happens is that you end up pressing that point down and it kind of recoils into itself. So if you hold it like this on the side, then you'll forever have a nice point and you also can use the whole side, the whole side of the blending stump. Um, what else here? The other thing is that in holding your pencil like this and using it in this way, it keeps the pencil forever sharp. It's easy to turn it in your hand and so you don't end up flattening this. So you can draw for a longer amount of time without sharpening your pencil. So wouldn't it be cool if you didn't have to sharpen your pencil every 10 to 20 minutes? It's just sharp. So um, I really love that aspect of it as well. A really great trick that I have learned that I picked up about white erasers. So I use a white eraser not as an eraser of mistakes, but as a drawing tool in itself. So working back and forth between negative space, so positive and negative space. One of the issues is that if you take a white eraser and you're using it the way that it's built like this, you always want a point um, to get into details and a hard edge, but then it's easily worn down and then you just end up with this like round oblong shape. If you take your utility knife and you cut the eraser into a wedge, like that. It's just this um, really interesting way. We're forced to use our hand in a certain way um, to hold the back side of it and it forces us to kind of hold it in the same way as we hold our pencil like this and we end up pressing down on it at an angle therefore keeping this end continuously sharp for an extremely long time so it doesn't wear down that point um, and so you always have um, a good spot to do a hard edge to do highlights and um, they're really simple and easy to use and you get to like keep using up the whole eraser how many times do you end up with like half of an eraser and you feel like it's useless because it's hard to hold and you have lost all the hard edges um, that give you the hard edges in your drawing. So this way you get a lot more use out of your eraser and um, it's just an easier tool to use. So um, I hope that that was interesting and informative. Um, Please follow me on social media. Again, it's Daphne Cote, D-A-P-H-N-E-C-O-T-E. -E. I'm on Facebook, Instagram. You can follow me on my YouTube channel. I'd really love it if you'd subscribe and like um, my videos. Uh, I hope that it was, um, that you learned something today and I hope that you have a great rest of your day and pick up some pencils, get drawing. <laughs>